Hello folks, I am coming to you from the future relative to the video that you're about to see uh, because I need to tell you three things. One, as I said, this video is old. It was filmed in November 2019, uh, which is the reason that it has a different background and more importantly, much worse audio quality. I apologize. Back then, I just didn't have the means to do better, so I hope you'll put up with it. Second, I now have a Patreon. There's more info down in the description below and also at the end of the video, but just so you know, that's a thing now. You can support me if you like. Yay! And thirdly, do watch till the end of the video, not just because of Patreon, but there are bloopers. There are always bloopers at the ends of my videos. So, just so you know, enjoy! A fair warning before we head into this video. My French is basically non-existent and there is quite a bit of French happening in this video. So uh, basically I apologize in advance for all the French words that I will inevitably end up butchering. Just know that I am doing my absolute best. As per usual with these videos, if you would like to listen to the music before I talk about it, you can do so by clicking on the little eye, which is I think up here, or you can look down in the description below where you will find a link to a live recording by yours truly. And now, allons-y. Oh well. The First World War broke out about a year ago and France is already fiercely engaged in battle with Germany. Claude Debussy, French composer, has had enough. In a letter to his publisher in August 1915 he writes I think of the youth of France, wantonly mown down by those culture merchants and of its contribution to our heritage, now forever lost to us. The music I'm writing will be a secret homage to them. What's the use of a dedication? However you look at it, it's the result of egoism in a state of uncertainty, and that won't bring anyone back to life. So did he write a big symphony to commemorate the victims of the war? Maybe he wrote a requiem, uh, which is a large funeral piece for orchestra and choir. No, he didn't. Instead, he wrote a cycle of sonatas. If you'll remember from a previous video of mine, sonatas are very intimate pieces of music for usually two instruments. Now, I understand your confusion. Wouldn't you want a deeply emotional and heartfelt tribute to be a bit bigger than that? However, it makes sense that Debussy would choose this type of piece to return to what he viewed as inherently French music. Because the thing is, at the time, German music was mostly represented by Richard Wagner and Richard Strauss both composers who were, and still are, very well known for their opulent works for orchestra and for their operas. Now, this truly was large, bombastic music, overwhelming, overpowering. So, to Debussy, it felt only right to stand up against that kind of music with the exact opposite. Hence, sonatas, specifically in the style of French Baroque music. Tragically, Debussy died of colon cancer before he was able to finish the full cycle of six sonatas that he had planned. But he did leave us three of them, of which the first is for cello and piano. Now let's have a closer look at this wonderful little piece. I say little and I mean little. This sonata with three movements takes ten minutes at most to perform. I mean, compare that to one of Wagner's operas, which can last up to and over four hours. The first movement of this sonata consists of only 51 bars. Other composers <clears throat> take that much space just to introduce you to the very first idea of a movement. However, even though the piece is so short, it's packed to the brim with details and information. Debussy always included very meticulous notes right in the score on how he wanted performers to play his music. And on the one hand, that's very useful for us, so from me to you, Claude, Cheers! On the other hand, it also means that there is a lot of information to unpack in a very short amount of time. So, uh, cheers for that, I guess. Imagine an actor having to perform a stirring, emotionally multifaceted monologue, 
while at the same time having to follow a very complicated winding path around the set, all the while having to perform very specific hand gestures. That's me trying to perform Debussy. At the beginning of the 20th century, with French Impressionism and Expressionism starting to emerge, composers were beginning to properly explore the different techniques musicians can use to change the sound of their instruments. So their focus moved away from harmonic and melodic structures and more towards, well, expressing actual images and feelings through music. Over the course of this sonata, Debussy asks the cellist to quickly and frequently change between arco and pizzicato, as well as to be deliberate about where exactly the bow needs to meet the string. For example, right up on the fingerboard for a very subdued, wispy and quiet sound, or as close to the bridge as possible for an extremely hard, steely and cold sound. And you have to understand that, on the whole, we are not used to making this many quick changes, so trying to play Debussy always is a proper challenge and requires a lot of concentration and a good amount of dexterity. You don't want to accidentally launch your bow into the audience after all. At least I hope you don't. But enough of all this technical talk, let's get into the first movement. piano opens with a bold yet solemn declaration. In that moment, it's as if out of complete darkness, a spotlight suddenly shines on Debussy himself as he steps up and declares, I am French. This is French music. And the cello joins in with the same determination in a wonderful flourish, modifying what the piano played a bit earlier, as if confidently making space for itself. But only moments later, it tapers off, suddenly unsure. And now we really are inside this sonata. It's full of stops and starts, unfinished thoughts and sentences, statements that start confidently but then taper off into an awkward mumble. The through line is a mixture of intense melancholy and determination. Take this next phrase, for example. We start with a definitive motif, three notes leading us a short way down, and really, it could go anywhere from there. But the line just continues down, down, down. It tries to come up again, but it's too late. The thought is gone, and it dissolves in the lower register of the cello. Then, we return to the beginning of that same phrase, but the harmonic accompaniment on the piano is now different, more wistful, inviting, almost seductive. But again, it ends in a quiet, solemn way. See what I mean? It's such a simple musical idea, and yet, there is so much information and so many tiny differences that these two phrases that are theoretically identical sound like two completely different worlds. And the same pattern is applied to the next two phrases. And what I find really fascinating is that when you look at the score, you don't even have to hear the music to know that this is what's happening. Do you see it? Starts and stops, thoughts put out there and yet left weirdly unfinished. It's quite unsettling, really. But then, 20 bars in, a real change. Both piano and cello start repeating this very turbulent pattern, and they begin quiet and slowly, but then they become faster and faster and louder, and actually both the performers and the listeners have to really be careful not to lose sight of the beat as the pattern goes round and round and round like a whirlpool. Then eventually, from the chaos emerges the opening declaration, standing proud and defiant. Debussy tells the cellist to play largement déclamé and forte molto sostenuto, while the piano imitates what to me sounds like massive bells ringing to accompany this declaration. This is French music. However, as before, we don't stay in this jubilant mood for very long. The line is already leading down again, all the way down to the cello C string, and within just two bars, we are once again in a completely different kind of soundscape. It was sort of flimmering, flickering, and 
and there's the downward phrase from the beginning again. Isn't it so strange? In earlier styles, composers would have made sure to make this transition smooth and logical, using a modulation for it, but not Debussy. He wants this change to be abrupt. This little symbol here, those two lines, are evidence of that. So at first, the phrase is repeated in the exact same way as we hear it at the beginning, but then, and this is my favourite part of the movement, the atmosphere turns so chilly, it's as if your breath has been taken away. Debussy makes the instruments play a lot slower, and we get this contrast between the piano's very deep register playing the barest harmonic line, as opposed to the cello's fairly high, barely moving line of melody. And if that music doesn't make you think of destroyed landscapes littered with the dead bodies of soldiers, then I don't know what will. And then, and we're almost at the end of the movement, we have what I think of as the first moment of real and openly expressed pain. It's just two bars, but the warm and earthy sound of the G-string playing this French declaration motif together with these harmonies in the piano just really squeezes the heart. And to me, this is Debussy looking out onto the battlefield and seeing the destruction and loss of life and just allowing himself to mourn. From there, the movement just tapers out, quite literally, as the cello moves from its deepest point up to the quietest, brightest harmonics, which gives us a very hollow, bell-like sound to finish this prologue. That was a lot, wasn't it? And we still have two more movements to go, but that's for the next video. For now, if you would like to listen to the music without me talking all over it, you can find a link to one of my own performances down in the description below, and there will also be a link on the end screen, which will follow after all of this. Feel free to have a look around my channel and check out the other videos that I've made as well, and if you like what you see, consider subscribing to my channel, it really would mean the world to me. Until next time, stay tuned! Basically, I apologize in advance for all the French words that I will inev inevitably... I'm not just butchering French words, I'm butchering English as well. Here we go. France? No. This is gonna be a long one. So did he write a symphony? No. If you, if you, if you, uh, eh, ugh, language is hard tonight. Now I understand your confusion because wouldn't you want a big? <sighs> Hence sonatas, specifically, specifically burping. It's full of stops and starts as is my brain.